created in their own minds as God. And they worship that. They bow to it. They sing to it. They praise it. They cry and they sing spiritual songs. And, and you see it all, all over the television. You see it everywhere. These people bowing down to that image that allows them to live in their sins, be saved in their sins, and live in their sins. And they're praising it. And they're loving it. They're wallowing in it. But it's the image. So what happens? God gives them up. In verse 24, Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their heart to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature, creature rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. They served the image. Exchanged the truth of God. See, they first suppressed the truth, like Cain did. Suppressed it. He heard it. He heard it. You should rule over it. Its desire is for you, Cain. So he suppressed it because his heart was darkened. Now, in their, in their darkened condition, serving the image, now they exchange it. Exchange truth for lie. They exchange the truth of God for a lie. Worshipping that image. How do they do that? They listen to the lying preachers, the heaps and heaps of lying preachers. It says, Timothy, he like, likens it unto Timothy in 2 Timothy. In the last, last day, they'll heap unto themselves teachers. They will not endure sound doctrine. They'll heap unto themselves teachers with itching ears, saying these pleasing things unto them, telling them that, well, you don't have to. That's works gospel. Oh, that's a works salvation. You don't have to do anything. You're not judged according to your deeds. You don't have, God can't see you sin. You're imputed righteous. All, all that stuff has to do with exchanging the truth of God for a lie because it's clearly seen in the Scriptures what the truth is. How much more clear could it be God telling you should rule over it? How much more clear? In the New Testament it says you should lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. You should repent. You should clear yourself of wrongdoing. How much more clear? But no, you let the preachers tell you that God's supposed to do that for you. So you sit and you wait for God to do that for you it never happens. You remain vile. You get dark, more darkened in your foolish condition. And you bow to the image. Once you bow to that image and exchange the truth of God for a lie, God gives you up to your vile passions. He gives you up. Just in verse 26. You're given up to your vile passions. See, the vile passions kick in then. This is the reason. I want you to understand this now. This is the reason... That the people in the churches today, you hear every day, oh, you hear multitudes of stories of child molestation, of, of improper behavior between men and women, of children, men, men and women going after children, uh, divorces, uh, you name it. All manner of improper conduct. Up to the lie, God's given them over to their vile passions. It's what you want. It's just like it just like liken it unto unto the the schools the schools in our in our communities you want, the the people wanted schools with no rules no dress codes no no discipline no anything no anything well that's what they got they got what they wanted now the schools are like armed camps you got to have armed policemen at the schools you got to have lockdown you got to have a bunch of, of foolish rules because you can't do anything to anybody but you got what you wanted same thing, God's going to give you over to what you want. Because it's your own free will to rule over these things. But see, your preachers have told you, under the lie, under exchanging the truth for a lie, they told you that you can't rule over it, you're born that way, and you've got to wait for God to change your desires. Well, see, that's never going to happen, because God doesn't change your desires until you repent. Certainly after you repent, and you're cleared of wrongdoing, and you come to the mercy seat, there's going, to, there's going to be the exceeding promises and everything that pertains to life and godliness and all things that work to, all those things that work to, to the betterment of the soul. Surely. But not initially. Initially, you have to rule over and stop the sin and come to God. And come to God. But everybody's got you getting saved in your sins today. So God gives them up to their vile passions, and then they go into the depths of Satan, as it describes here. The women exchange the natural use for what is against nature, and the men also, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust for one another, men with men, 
committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their own error. For even that they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, see, they didn't retain. Okay, so they, they chuck, God, chuck God out. They, they sear their conscience with the hot iron. Because if you go on to read chapter 2, you see those God writing the laws upon men's hearts. See, every man born into the world, like John 1.9 says, he's born into the world with the light of God. I take that to mean the conscience that God places within man. See, man has a conscience. Animals are just born with instinct. Man is born with a conscience to know the difference between right and wrong. And even in this reprobate state, see, as he says, he puts them over to a reprobate mind or a debased mind. See, he, you, go to, you go from vile to reprobate. Reprobate. That's what happens here. You're getting given up and given over. You go from vile to reprobate. Meaning, not standing the test, unapproved, cast out, disqualified. It's, it's trans translated many ways in the scriptures. If you look at some of the scriptures where that word is used, reprobate. See, he's talking about they're given over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. And then he goes into this long list, verses 29 through 32, filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, malice, envy, murder, uh, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undis undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. See, all these things, just like, just like he talks about in Second Timothy chapter 3, the last days. But see, they have a form of godliness still. And I'll show you why here in a minute. But see, they're, they're, they're blind to these things, not, not standing the test. Reprobate. They go from the vileness, they go from worshiping the image, exchange truth for a lie, as I showed you. They're given over to those vile passions, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life, like John calls it. They're given over to those things, the lust of the flesh, lust of the... See, Jesus said to cut off that, that, sin, that sinful hand. Pluck out that eye and cast it from you. See that? But yet, no, they, they can't do that because their preachers tell them they can't do it. It's not necessary. Then they're given to a debased mind. Say that God gives them up over. God gave them over to a reprobate or debased or disqualified mind. If you see where else that scripture's you, that same word, it's very interesting to see. It's in 1 Corinthians 9.27 where Paul talks about he could become reprobate. if He says, I buffet myself, I discipline my body, at least after I preach to others, I myself become reprobate. Same word. Same word. See, don't let these preachers tell you that, well, you, there's no way you can fall away once you... Paul seen the possibility of becoming reprobate if he didn't discipline his flesh because we're still in the flesh. We don't war according to the flesh. We don't walk according to the flesh, the evil desires of the flesh. But we are still in the mortal body until we become immortal. 2 Corinthians 13, verses 5 through 7, where it says, examine yourself. Test your faith. Prove yourself. Prove that you're in the faith. Prove it to yourself. At least you don't stand the test, because that's what reprobate means, not standing the test and be found to be reprobate. Again, speaking to believers. And he talks about uh, Janus and Jamus that opposed Moses. They were reprobate, they were debased, I think it says in some of the newer versions. Again, in Titus 1.16, another case. And in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 8, in that context of verses chapter 6, verses 1 through 8, where it talks about people that sin against knowledge of the truth, they crucify him afresh. It's impossible to restore them again to repentance. Because they've trampled the blood, they've insulted the spirit of grace. And then he gives that illustration about the rain falling on the earth, bringing forth things that are good and profitable to us. But if the earth becomes parched and dried, it's only good then to be burned. Read the scripture. Burned. Reprobate. It's reprobated. It's disqualified. It's of no use. That's what happens to a person in this state that exchanges the truth of God. So for, it starts just merely by suppressing the truth, by not listening to the commands of God, knowing, just like he said, okay, now I was going to turn it, I was going to show you that. In verse 32, I didn't read that one. In verse 32, see, these people were all these things from, from verse uh, 29 to 31. 
unloving, undeserving, unforgiving, unmerciful, all, all this stuff, but yet knowing the righteous judgment, they knew the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are not are worthy of death.